Welcome to Squatch DTV, where the truth is first before all else. Join your hosts, veteran investigator, TV personality, and author Steve Culls, and from the Kentucky Bigfoot Research Project and the Kentucky Fried Fixes channel, Chris Bennett. Sit back and prepare to take yourself on a journey with the longest-running Bigfoot podcast, Squatch DTV. Here are your hosts, Steve and Chris. And good evening, cyberspace. And somebody's got the show running behind them. <laughs> it was on my phone. My bad. <laughs> and good evening. As you can see, we have quite the gaggle in here. Probably more than we've. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> Superstar. Jeez. There is Chewy all sacked out. Yes, from Brian and Chewy. You like it. There's Chewy. You're like, <laughs> What the hell are you doing bothering me right now? Maybe, uh, like, maybe please, you excuse me. Hey, could you leave all of you on the phone Chewy. while he's resting? Hey, right. <gasps> it's like, huh? This is all this for me? Oh, God. Chewy, it's Matt, your best friend. Chewy. Yeah, same response. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yes, and, and as Walter says, <laughs> the other office assistant. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> All right, you did your job. Yeah, <laughs> yes, the about. office assistant is sitting over here, uh, by the way, smiling at me, just waiting for the next. Uh, here, one more, one more. <laughs> there you go, go. All right. <laughs> so, anyway, welcome everybody for today's Squatch DTV for April 14th, 2024. I'm your host, your guide, Squatch Sector Steve Coles, along with Chris Bennett right down there. And look, we got a, we got a whole bunch of guests yeah. over there. Golly, whoop. Oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> of course, we got Matt from uh, Central Florida Bigfoot, Mike from Tactical Bigfoot Research. Everybody knows Alex, Alex Petikoff. Of course, we got Eric Swanson over there. And of course, we got Brian and Chewy go hiking. And Chewy's kind of taking it easy today. <laughs> so, welcome, everybody. Oh, my Lord. And, um, this should be a fun show. We've been having a lot of fun already behind behind the scenes before the show got started. So until until I looked up and said, "Oops, we're a minute late." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, so then, uh, uh, time well, we fly. Do the roll call over here. If yeah, you... let's get right to the roll call so we can get to this uh, wonderful uh, dais tonight. Uh, of course, we got Walter Kroll first Walter. in today. Numero uno. Yeah. Of course. Uh, uh, Pat Collins, uh, uh, we're not going to, uh, Henry May, Sharon, good to see Henry? you, Jim Bodkin, Henry? welcome, Jim. uh, Mick is in the house, hello, Mick, Mick. and, uh, Ristol, Ristol, good to see you, Ristol. sir, welcome, uh, we got Tom Connolly and the Bigfoot oh. Society, Jeremiah, Jim. good to see you, um, Grasshopper is in the house, Daniel Weeks, and Lou, uh -huh. Lou Kilroy was here, Little Kilroy. Of course, we got B Lynn also in hey, the house. DM Zabo, good to see you, sir. Oh. I know you. I know DM Zabo. You catch us on replay, but it's good to see you live yeah. once in a while. It Arthur, is. watch Jay Fritz. Hello, Arthur. guys. Of course, uh, Jeremiah's like, hey, it's Enrico Palazzo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chuck, hey, Chuck uh, from Nezra. Good to see you, Chuck. Good to hey, see Chuck. you. Patrick Barron in the house as well. Yeah, welcome. And big foot world cryptids, the paranormal central Florida. Uh, hello, I'm Jeff. My, my good buddy, Jeff Trifoletti's mm -hmm. in the house. Yeah. And uh, Christy London is also here as well. Hello, Christy. <laughs> and this guy. Oh, we, we know this guy. Oh, I know who that is. Hey, Dan. Go on, Mike. Uh, Max Powers in the house. Uh, Kaiju Ninja 1985. Hello, Kaiju Ninja. Ninja. Angel Nolan finding the trackway Angel. as well. Uh, well, Max was with us. Yep, Max Powers. Yes. Yeah, so, um, what's up, Max and Trackway? And trackway was with us. And the Florida crew there that piped in there, they were with yep. us too. Nice. Yep. And Jeffrey Thomas is in the house. Yes. So uh, yeah, I'd love to have you all, but as you can see, the crowd, uh, the screen gets kind of crowded when we have this yeah. many people on it. I I'm lost. 
Uh, so, we can see OT. Uh, hi, OT. OT in the house. Hello, OT. Good to see you, sir. Okay, so let's get started up. Um, so I don't know where to start necessarily, but um, <laughs> we, we'll, we'll start with the guy up on top there, Matt. Matt, why don't you tell us the whole premise of well, this expedition and when it was ran and all that fun stuff? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a true story. Every camp out I have done, and I call them camp outs. I really don't get into the ex expedition, expedition yeah. bit, bit, but uh, they're camp outs. You know, we have a good time and they're, they're planned and there's people there and we usually have an agenda. But this one was just like every other one. I get a phone call from Mike Ann and he says, hey, I'm coming to Florida. What do you got? And that's the God's truth. That's, that's how it happened. So he, he gives me a date. He's coming down and I try to throw something together. And... I was kind of running out of ideas because, you know, last a year ago, um, Alex came down and I wanted so bad to do the corridor then. But Brian and I didn't feel like Brian Darcy, who I go out with, um, we didn't feel like we had the routes and the positions and, and everything in place to really pull that off. So we went to the Green Swamp. And um, so I really wanted to do that. But this time when Mike called and he, he gave me the dates, I said, when are you coming down? That set the dates, and from there, I just started to reach out to a few people. About a, maybe a three or four days later, it hit me. You know, I'm running out of time here. My time in Florida is coming to a quick end. I need to move the needle. What can I do to move the needle? And um, against advice from most of my friends, <laughs> I threw together a, uh, a camp out. I found out the maximum that I could have to get a park. And I booked it and pretty much started inviting people. And when I started inviting people, the one thing I wanted to do on this one is not have everyone in camp who thinks alike. I wanted to have a dialogue, kind of what we do online, but usually it's in a real negative form of people who would go out together. And I was curious. And, and I, I'll tell you selfishly, and this is why I was hesitating on coming on tonight. Um, I wanted these guys to tell the story. I'm trying not to get into the narrative. Okay. That's, that's really what I'm trying to do. But against a lot of people on the screen's advice, I, I brought in people of different mindsets. I brought in the, the woo. I brought in that other channels would think, Hey, they're, they're, they're blob squatch. You know, they, they get, they see stuff too much. And I wanted that. I wanted to see what would happen. I brought in flesh and blood. You know, I brought in the paranormal. I brought in audio people. And, you know, audio people, there's, there's, um, you know, you, you can have pareidolia in audio also. And so I just wanted to see what would happen. And the, and the group of 25 was pretty evenly spaced, like five, 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 five or so of each type. I wanted to see what happened. And already already i'm amazed at what happened the experiment went way beyond what i thought it would be i didn't expect any action at all i didn't expect interactions from the people who had things happen um i thought it would be my bias the woo side you know <laughs> or the people who see bigfoot a lot in their imagery is post coming back you know, where you're looking through big screen and you're seeing things that could be pareidolia, but to them, they're very real. And these people are good friends of mine. They're not hoaxing. They honestly believe this. And who am I to say they're wrong? They may be the right ones and all of the smart, critical thinkers may be the wrong ones. I don't know. So I wanted to throw together something that answered a lot of questions of mine. The, the BS you're seeing online of the infighting between these types groups and really go out together as a team, which is really risky, see what would happen and have a dialogue the next morning or that night of what happens. And that's really was one part of the experiment. The other part of the experiment, and it's already blown my mind, and there's some things I don't want to get into because I don't want to trip over narratives. The one thing I did was everybody who's coming with Alex and and um, and Eric and and Pathway, you know, anyone who 
<laughs> shoots. Um, trackway, sorry, I keep calling them pathway from the <laughs> email. Um, anybody who shoots, I wanted them to have their own narrative. So I put out an email and I'll read something here real quick. And this kind of raised a couple eyebrows, but I'm going to say, um, let me see if I can find them. I said, good afternoon, everyone. I'm excited about the upcoming camp out. I believe we have a good group of people, diverse in different beliefs, different techniques and different experiences. I don't want a group that 100% thinks the same. I'm approaching this camp out as a photojournalist and want to hear from all sides, not just what I believe is out there. Okay. Um, so that was one thing. And then I put, please note, there is no charge. And you mentioned this, you know, happenly on your show the other night, I heard. There is no charge for this outing, no charge for the campsite reservation. Just cover your own expenses and needs. A Publix is very close by, so you can drive there daily for food, supplies, and bathroom needs. <laughs> My application for this group camp states, and this is kind of important, we're all friends that have met on the trail over the past few years and we're having a reunion. True. We're all into photography, nature, and birding. True. Note, not all, no mention of YouTube or anything else. In Florida, there's a thing that if you're coming in as a production crew and you mention YouTube and you mention putting sticks of tripod sticks in the ground, it becomes a big deal. Hmm. You mentioned Bigfoot. I have noticed that it will shut you down real quick. Wow. Okay. So I did this reservation as a photography group of friends who have cameras. I said that specifically so if anybody rolled up on us and we got a bunch of cameras out, an unusual right. amount of cameras, we're a camera group right. of hiker enthusiasts, nature photographers. And I, I, I kind of think some people should take that into their playbook because otherwise I have heard people, not to mention names, and they were with us on our, on our group that in Florida ventured to a roadway side pull off trailhead to a state park entered it at night and let's just say park warden rangers whatever you want to call them rolled up on their vehicles figured they were in the park ran their tags found out who they were and called them or tracked them down with with the trail cams that were already in there <laughs> they were arrested they were fined and they're on probation that's how serious it gets and so I think in that situation, I didn't want to, and I stood up in front of everybody that night when we were doing a hello, like, hey, we're a group of photographers in case we're rolled up on. There is no mention of Bigfoot, Bigfoot. No one mentioned YouTube channels. We're having a good time. And that's really the truth, the truth, the truth. I just left out YouTube and I left out Bigfoot. And I think that's important to pulling a, a group together like this. And then on a side note, <laughs> since, since uh, someone's here, I'll read this. I put the camp out rules by Matt Larson, no drugs, no drunken behavior, no smoke bombs. Everyone's footage is their own. I would appreciate a couple of clips to put in my film. Everyone's narrative is their own. Do not hike at night in the Hillsborough river state park or any Florida state park boundary. I've heard of stories of arrests being made. We are hiking photography and having fun. Thanks for coming to the reunion. And that's probably pretty much the email I sent out. Well, you so, forgot the you forgot the last rule. And what was that? Don't give me a snapple. <laughs> <laughs> and you know there, there there's a lot of people um, that was in the invite list, but I just was concerned about activity. I I didn't want um, the smoke bomb was directed towards someone here on screen that, uh, Boo! <laughs> <laughs> on, on a previous outing, uh, can I say this? <laughs> on a previous outing, everyone kind of splits and goes out. I hang back with them. Thank God. And someone pulls a canister and gives it a flip 20 feet. It hits the pine needles and just goes, <laughs> <laughs> in a circle within four seconds and i was dancing on my bad knee i was dancing 
started dancing. Brian was sitting there going, oh, no, what's happening? <laughs> and it, it me, uh, a little crazy. So I just, and also, it, it, it wasn't only that. The smoke hung around a long time, and I didn't want someone to think there was an actual fire there. Right. And send people right. down on top. So I tried to cover the bases and keep that to that so th that was kind of the way i went about it and the reason why i had so many different people there the narratives are still coming out um you have to go to these folks channels and see what they have my narrative won't be out for a year because i'm not going to complete it until i'm up in kentucky and in, in my new place and uh they're uh, outside berea and i will work on the four year my four year bigfoot journey and this will be this outing is the last 10 minutes of that film and, of, and there, and of there my was, of my vision of what I saw and what I think happened. And there it is, Matt taking six days to upload it. <laughs> Coming from Kentucky. <laughs> is it that bad? Oh no, we have a new and improved squirrels <laughs> running our internet. <laughs> Big yeah. muscular looking, you know. So I don't know if that makes sense to everybody, but um, I wanted to cover some ground and that's what I did. And I used a bunch of great friends to help me. And I got more out of this. Brian and I, my head is spinning on what to do next because the areas they went to was not the areas we go to. We were in the same area, but they went a different direction. I'm going, what the, what's going on here? So uh, it threw me, it threw me for a loop where you guys went. You went a different direction. I, I I thought you would go south, and everybody went north. And um, it was just crazy. So there's information there. Um, you all know how – you all know. You know how certain TV shows will do the group of four, and they split off in two, and they got the little – they do the really cool area, the beacons. Well, I had this idea of doing uh, Apple Air Tags and sending out basically 15 groups or – of 10 of two i'm sorry two maxing out the 25 i have all the air tags right here where's my where's my camera but more than and then i get this smarty pants response from mike ann good luck <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean <laughs> so i send out a real quick email how many people have apple iphones <laughs> and you have droid, and it's like droid, 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 droid. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, and Becky. Then, and then when I got back, I'll, I'll tell you real quick, and then and then I'm, then I'm gonna shut up. But I'll tell you when I got back, someone said, "Well, why didn't you just do the Find Me app? It would have worked the same way for free. Had everyone." sign on to the sign me app and then you can track the team. But what I wanted was an aerial view of 12 positions, not just two covering a two square mile, two mile North and South, two mile East and West, which we did pull off. Um, but I had to do it with GPS locations. So we have a map. I have everyone's position on it. And then I have everybody's narratives of what's happening on it. And then I'm trying to see if it makes sense. And it all happened on the northern boundary, the opposite direction that Brian and I go. So, <laughs> so it was pretty cool. And what I'm also finding out is that, so I wanted that graphic for my final film. I, I wanted to just blow away the, here's my two positions, one by the creek and one by the lake, and blah, blah. We had 12, okay, really cool. So I wanted to do that and then... Um, and then the data I'm looking at is where those people were to what I had going on. <clears throat> there's things that um, there are several, let's just say there's several aha moments that I went, oh, crap. Because remember the episode of The Corridor? I think this is the last one I produced where the Black Panther jumped out of a tree. One of the pins overlapped that spot within 20 yards. I mean, it's really close. And I went, okay, this is like, this is where we got creeped out. So there's, there's some information there for me that it's starting to add up. And um, I'm just curious what their narratives are going to be. And 
it was also the ultimate vetting expedition. I think it's a viable space. What do my friends think? And then Brian and I had to have a really serious conversation. This is the biggest thing of all of it is Brian Darcy and I had to sit down and said, do we want to tell these people our, our location? Do we want to tell these people where we are? That takes some stones. Do we want to tell these people um, why we think it's a good location? What's happening with private campgrounds and ex-rangers and homeowners that we know have been pushed out of land? Do we want to reveal this? And then you got to understand Eight of the crew were there were Florida people that I no longer go out with daily. Do I want them to know this information? And do I trust them with the information? So this was a real, not only a vetting expedition, but this was laying all my cards on the table and saying, this is what I got. This is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm happening. Go. And that was it. That was really the trip. And I haven't seen that done. No, it, it is uh, quite unique, I must say. You have all these different disciplines like, of all I these like different this. disciplines of, of Bigfoot research to be there at once, collectively working together towards a goal. I think it's a wonderful way. It was fun. I'm, I'm, I, seeing, I'm seeing some stuff I haven't talked about. I'm not going to talk about tonight because, again, I don't want to interrupt, inter, interrupt sure. anyone's narratives, but <laughs> there's some really... There's some eye-opening <laughs> things that I've noticed between the groups and the friends I know of what they came back with that is just like, ah, okay, ah, okay. You know, it's one of those moments. And tonight we have three Bigfoot researchers and one filmmaker with us. And uh, I want to get Eric's uh, play towards the middle of this rather than the beginning of this because... I think out of everybody, you probably will have the most unique um, perspective of it not really being entrenched in the Bigfoot community. So it would be really interesting to hear. So I don't know uh, which one of uh, Alex, Mike, or uh, Brian, which one of you guys wants to go first? I mean, I'll start it out. All right. Okay, Alex, you're up first. Yeah, so I thought it was really interesting because I remember Matt telling me about this kind of corridor idea and Matt, I feel like we've known each other, what for three going on three, four years now. Mm -hmm. So I had gone out in early 2022 with Matt and we went to, as he mentioned, the green swamp, but he, I remember he told me about the corridor and I thought that was a really interesting concept because in this, in the Bigfoot topic, a lot of times people say, Oh, go to these really remote areas, go to these areas that have millions of acres of wilderness. Sure. That's probably you'd assume good habitat for something like this. But your chances of having something happen are so tiny, usually practically nil. And that's the majority of what happens when you go out in these areas. Whereas this particular area that Matt had been working these three years was, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, a, a, a mile wide at the. <laughs> it goes down. It goes down to a mile at one place, but that was about four miles north of us still. Okay. Still, so two miles, right? But it, it's a choke point, yeah. It's a choke point. That's the point. So I went into it expecting we were going to have all sorts of animal activity. I assumed, hey, if there's animals, which in Florida, I've had the chance to spend, uh, I think, the past three years going down to Florida into the Everglades, as I mentioned, the Green Swamp, the Ocala National Forest. So I've had a chance to see those environments and kind of get a feel for them. I'm really interested in the Florida Panther stuff, especially. And I've seen bear down there. We've cast Florida Panther prints. We've reported multiple years in a row to the Florida Wildlife Commission with Panther uh, tracks that we found that have been submitted into their site. So I knew Florida has a lot of interesting wildlife. And of course, you have the skunk ape story. So I thought going into this area, we were definitely going to encounter some sort of wildlife. It just seemed as if it was going to be kind of a matter of fact, because again, you have a choke point where things have to move from point A to point B. And that's kind of what happened. We ran into a lot of critters. There were other groups there that they saw pigs on thermal deer. Uh, there were hunting stands out there. So people obviously go to this area because it's probably a lot easier to go to here. And I think it was maybe um, Brian I was talking to, not Brian below me, Brian, uh, Matt's Brian. I think he had said the amount of times going out in the green swamp, you barely run into anything because it's a very large area. Yet you come to an area like this corridor 
almost every time you have something happen. Matt, you said had a crazy story of a deer charging you or a, a buck maybe. So yeah. it's like you probably have more going on in this area. So for me, what I wanted to do was uh, I'd been kind of developing this saddle hunting stand, which would allow me to get 15 to 20 feet up in a tree. My buddy, uh, Paul Fusinski of Aptitude Outdoors podcast, he kind of developed this. It's, it's nothing new. It's just a saddle hunting stand where you use yourself, you get up in a tree and it's mobile. It's not like a tree stand where you have to set up and it's permanent. I can take this wherever. I mean, we spent like an hour walking around trying to find a spot for me to get up. So my idea was one of the nights, just in one of the groups, get up 15, 20 feet in the tree, sit there for three hours with the thermal and just see if we can get anything going on. Especially if we have five or six other groups out at that time, there's critters moving around. Uh, so that was kind of my idea going into it. And I thought it was, it was definitely fascinating. I got a couple thermal hits um, of something critters in the distance. I can't tell what they were. Uh, simultaneously to that, there are other groups having encounters with creatures uh, of known origin. Also maybe interesting. And I'm sure the other guys can talk about some of the weirder stuff, but um, I didn't expect us to have any kind of Sasquatch like activity. I mean, I, I don't know if there's any in that area, right? I'm, I'm not exactly on board hundred percent with that, but it's, I think the working theory and the, idea behind what Matt was trying to do was super interesting, as we mentioned, with all the different groups and everything. So that's kind of the approach I took was just, we'll just hit the ground and it's going to be really cool to have so many different groups in an area where you're almost guaranteed to have some sort of wildlife activity. And that we kind of ran with it from there. So that's kind of my take on it all. I thought it was a really cool experiment. It was a lot of fun. I mean, it wasn't the most super scientific expedition that you can have, but most Bigfooting outings are not that at all. So we had some fun. There were different viewpoints. There was a lot of stuff going on and it was just a blast overall. And I would definitely recommend people do this kind of stuff more often. Just get out there, just enjoy the woods. And if you do have something you think is evidence, do your due, due diligence to document it and then send it off to the right parties. Maybe somebody like Darby Orcutt, DNA study or hair analysis through somebody like Cindy Dosen or somebody who has kind of a competent scientific background in sample uh anal analysis and that sort of thing so that's kind of where i stand okay and see uh, hey see that's what i like is i also know that the people that were here again you talk about the ultimate vetting process i knew these people wouldn't blow smoke up my ass you right. know what i mean you know what i mean it's like i was gonna get exactly a take like that and that's exactly for me to move forward and wrap up Florida, I didn't, I couldn't think of any other way to do it. And so this is what's going to be interesting about this. I, I think I, it, it served its purpose well past what I expected. So, and, 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 Alex, and, and, thanks for that. Yeah. By and, and Matt, by the way, um, one of the things I'm thinking is that you're, you're, you know, you're eventually going to be leaving Florida. So it's kind of nice that you're showing some Floridians where this area is if they want to continue on. That was that was part of the plan. There there are a lot of sub plans to this. Yeah. And uh, Ron offered me money if I could pull people out of the green swamp. So. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the idea uh, how you did the invite uh, that, you know, Keep it as a uh, wildlife uh, camera club, you know, uh -huh. uh, because when you're out there and uh, a forest ranger approaches you, you don't want to, you know, if he asks you, do you have a watch? You say yes. <laughs> you don't say yes. And it's uh, it's eight after 12. And, uh, you know, no, no. Uh, so I'm kind of fortunate in New York. They don't care. Hmm. You could tell. I mean, I remember doing the Nat Geo back in 2011. And there was a ranger there showed up because Nat Geo had called. And the ranger was like, uh, how many people are staying in your camp? I said, uh, we have six that are staying, you know, permanently here for the next four days. And he was like, well, here, let me give you a permit just in case anybody else stays. That way you have, you know, if it gets to be over 10, you're all covered. And I was like, what? That's great. Yeah. yeah and, and they just, you yeah. know, I said, I know you probably, and the, the funniest thing I got, the most honest answer I ever got from a ranger was, I said, I bet you all, uh, you think all this Bigfoot stuff is a bunch of, you know, crap. He goes, oh, no, no, not at all. He goes, there's areas of the Adirondacks that have, uh, you know, been unexplored by, by, by man, haven't seen man in 200 years. 
And there was another car from the state sitting behind him. And he turns around and he goes like that. He goes, yeah, but that guy, he don't believe it. He's an asshole. <laughs> and I was like, what? So that was really kind of cool getting, uh, you know, uh, the real dope and not not having to worry about Big Brother trying to freak, you know, to, to tackle us on that. So that's, you know, that that that's a little eye opening about Florida. But thank you for sharing that because I never knew I would have eventually I would have made my way down to Florida and probably would have gotten in trouble. Well, the corridor also is a high area for poaching, evidently. So we've had numerous rangers that we have, you know, nicely talked to and had good conversations. And a couple of them I have told who I am and what I do. Um, yeah, I, I <laughs> there's a lot I still just don't want to say. I mean, yeah, there's this one spot every, every time I go there, it's it's a three mile bike ride into the swamp and I'll be there 20 minutes and a ranger shows up. Yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah. And I mean, the first time I said I was birding and I started <laughs> photographing the birds. And the second time I just went, what the hell? You know, I and then and then finally I just said, Well, I work for News Channel 8. I'm a photojournalist and I'm um looking for the swamp ape. Do you think I they may have put up some uh cameras out there? The, I've been told by three rangers that they have um cameras out there specifically for the po poaching issue that's going on. And that's what really makes you uh, concerned because a lot of these camps, these corridor um, water district, you know, preserves sort of thing, they have signs up closed at dusk. Yeah. So they don't want to find you in there at night. And so the only way to really get in there at night is to have a camp spot reserved at night. And then from there, I checked the rules very specifically, and there's nothing, because I was worried about that. Can you leave campground and be out at night? And so there's, a, I tell you, I learned a lot from this. Like, I'd never want to really do one again. <laughs> there, there's a lot of stress involved. There's a lot of advice coming from all directions, which I, I appreciated because I did deal with them the best I could. Um, you know, like the... Um, the alcohol. I mean, there's, there's people I wanted to invite that, but I just know they get a little too happy around a campfire, you know, and I surely didn't want a ranger running up on us and having one person with 15 beer, beer bottles laying under their chair, which they normally do. So those people didn't get invited. I mean, and I had to make that call and I'm not usually the one that makes calls like that. So it wasn't a comfortable thing to do to get the right mix, but I'm happy with the mix we got. I wouldn't change a thing. I would do it with the same people again. Um, it's just interesting to see how this is breaking down as it as it comes out because the stories are coming out. Track um, Trackway has some stuff out. Um, Chewy Brian and che Chewy have some stuff out. Brian <laughs> just did, I think. Um, <laughs> and and I started to lay down a track. I have something on the timeline. I went, no, I don't want to do that. I I told myself I wasn't going to produce anything right away from this. So. You know, if, if, uh, by the it way, Matt, is. if you want to invite anybody else on the show that was there, that's in chat, like somebody suggesting to bring Max on, if you could on Facebook, send him that link I sent you guys, but we'll gladly put him on. Max okay. would be great to have on, especially when I yep. talk to what happened yep. with us. Yeah. Yeah. That would that'd be good. Well, Max, we... would, he'll have to get a smoking jacket and he's probably sitting. <laughs> um, so let me talk a little bit so he can arrange his. He's yeah. pushing a couch over now. He's adjusting his life. Oh, thanks. Are you almost you. done, Max? Okay. I'll send Max the invite. Yeah. If you want to send uh, <laughs> Bill, Bill fighting the trackway, that one's fine too. Oh, uh, not Bill. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Does he mean finding the pathway? I keep saying that. I know. I, for the longest time, he had said finding the pathway. I'm like, who is that? Well, you and, then, know. and then I realized it was Bill, and I'm like, oh, okay. And, and he's, then, the, uh, he's the Chinatown knockoff of finding the uh, track. And, and of course, you, you you know him and his platypus jokes. Well, I didn't say I was smart. <laughs> I want to say uh, real quick, I just happened to be thinking, so... You know, I first went down last year and met with Matt, who's over that way. Um, and I put out two game cams that I, uh, like older ones I had. And one of them I got, I don't know, it was either, it was the 
image quality was so crappy that it was either hogs or a black bear or who knows what. Um, and then the other one, the only image I got was from, you know, about here to the belt buckle on somebody who had walked up to it and deleted every photo on it and then closed it back up. And that was the photo I got and them walking away. And now with Matt mentioning about the poachers, mm. I wonder if it could have been mm. something to do with that. You know, I can't imagine Jeez. why yeah, else anyone. A... Yeah, this time right. I brought a lock and I locked, you know, my, my newer game cam has a, I can lock the control panel closed oh, wow. and my snowboard lock will lock it to a tree. Cause I was like, I don't want that happening again. Cause for me, it's like, I would have just been like, Oh, look, some dude out hiking with his hunting rifle and thought nothing of it right. and just right. ignored it, you know? Right. Mm. Oh, wow. I hadn't heard that story. Mm. All right, Michael, you're up next. Well, Matt and I have been doing this a couple of years, so it was kind of cool. We've been trying to get to this area and you know, the, the stuff that was there, uh, very interesting, uh, seeing everybody from the, uh, the different chats and stuff we've met across the country and stuff to get out um, was kind of cool. Uh, Matt did a wonderful job putting this together. Um, being able to kind of sit first thing in the morning and kind of throw some stuff together, you know, who's doing what, what the plans were. Um, he did not warn us about the mosquitoes. Um, <laughs> I, I will say I watched people with thermal cells and, deep woods off and everything else still running around. Uh, poor Alex had to watch me run back up down the trail. I probably scared more things away after getting <laughs> chewed up. Um, but, uh, you know, we, there was definitely a lot of hog hair. Uh, the first gopher tortoise that I'd seen of its size uh, in Florida and how fast that thing moved and how well it wanted to kill Chewy um, <laughs> and chase us down trail. Um, you know, but we had other stuff. We, you could hear a lot of other animals in the area, you know, the birding aspect, man, I was taking pictures of all the birds and all the wildlife because I wanted to document everything I possibly could. So when the videos came out, when the audio, I, came I out, hear a bird in the background. Yeah. Shepherd and <laughs> I'm more in the background. That's okay. So, um, but I wanted to make sure I had documentation, all the local wildlife. Um, I mean, Alex and I kind of went up north to look for uh, some monkeys, you know, <laughs> what we didn't find. But we know that there's quite a few, um, you know, groups of different primates that have been released from different filming expedition or shows and movies and stuff over the years. So I wanted to document that. You know, I every year that I do go to Florida, my big thing is I'm going for the birds. You know, I want those pictures. I mean, you and I, Steve, we've done it, you know, up north. You guys know I'm up big proponent of those bird apps um just because i want to know what's in the area and we did we found lots of clumps of with hog hair you know in the middle of the trail you know alex has got some pretty good video of it i know i think brian you got some eric you got some of that those those tracks so you could see them come across those those big game trails so it's 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 a hell of a choke point um it was kind of interesting to see that the the flesh and blood crew actually uh kind of bounced on things ahead of time you know, over the, uh, the folks are more on the, the paranormal woo end of things. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was interesting. I, I'm not going to take away from watching Brian come run around the woods at us, <laughs> you know, with a knife in one hand and a dog leash in another. And, you know, like what's going on here, you know, not who we all had our money uh, on. I mean, we had 25 people there. I think you were like 24, right. 25. Okay, okay. Yeah. We, we we gotta hear the story behind this one. Yeah, we gotta get we gotta get Max here first. We're not gonna go there you know, right. quite yet. Um well we could we could premise, I guess, by saying that the first night the first night when we were out there, there's a there's a guy named um Mike who's a another camera guy, works in the news business like Matt down in Florida. He had a friend of his who had never really been in the woods before, who was like a pro professional videographer with him. That was one team. And they went out and they were calling us all like, dude, we're having all kinds of animal activity, we're seeing hogs and deer. And then they said they were having, they were hearing some kind of weird mumbling sound as they described it. And they were freaked out. So I think at one point, um, 
Eric, you and I actually went to go rescue them, right? I mean, they were, <laughs> yeah. they were. I mean, they were in an area where there was some hunting going on. You could see there was hunting stands, little tents, uh, even a feed station at one point. We we actually broke off from the rest of the group. I think Mike and Chew and Brian and Chewy, you guys didn't have muck boots to cross this creek. So Eric and I were like, all right, you guys stay here. We'll go rescue them. Because they're calling us saying, guy, we're having all kinds. I mean, they were experiencing all kinds of animals. And they're like, yeah, I gave them a thermal unit. So they were able to film the hogs and all the other stuff. They said there was this weird mumbling going on that they thought it was like a person, but it was moving further away. And we're all thinking like, okay, I mean, there's so much wildlife out here. Who really knows what's going on, right? It's almost a sensory overload. Um, yes, those two guys live in Florida, but they don't go out a lot. I mean, I know, Matt, you've been out with Mike before, but the other guy literally had never been in the woods <laughs> before. I mean, total novice. So uh, that was interesting. So that was kind of the preface to, I guess, what what was going to happen. But Eric, you remember their reactions when we went to go oh, kind of yeah. res rescue them, right? Well, then when we, uh, I don't know if you remember, when we first met up with um, Mike and Christian, we were hearing something moving the way I was oriented. It was off to my right. And I don't know, like 20 yards at the most, I saw a flash of brown. It had the cadence, the footsteps of just being a deer. But I mean, it was headed towards us, right? which is pretty unusual in my experience. You know, usually when I spook a deer, it goes the other direction. It doesn't even though it was 20 yards away, it was still heading in our direction, you know? So I don't know what that was running from, but it was, it was more afraid of that than it was of us, you know? Yeah. Cause I should say that, that first night we didn't do groups of two. We kind of did three big groups and then Mike and this guy, Christian went off and then it was myself, Eric, Mike and Brian and Chewy in one group. We kind of ended up going down this swamp path and getting destroyed by mosquitoes and had to turn back that was a whole ordeal and that's when we ended up kind of going because there were some fields and other stuff where these guys were encountering all these animals which made a lot of sense because there's deer and hog and everything that would probably go into those areas but so all right we have we have the, the man of the hour i think <laughs> he's got his jacket on. <laughs> <laughs> and the turtleneck yes <laughs> i don't know if this is gonna work i don't have a mic or anything so I suddenly what? feel like I've underdressed. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I read <laughs> Idol of Millions. Max, Max and Brian, you guys have oh to talk God. about. I like his caption, <laughs> Idol of Millions. <laughs> oh my God. Did I go grab a uh, jacket and tie? Oh or? my God. I got to. <laughs> 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 oh I, I need to preface something before they, these two guys go we just gotta get it all out now i gotta yeah. get all my laughing out now because it's just gonna get worse oh, yeah <laughs> max and brian is like a combo at, no, go, mike, mike, out of new mike, england mike set it up mike set it up <laughs> after these guys had the mumbling ex the the mike and christian had the, the mumbling experience um the night before, Max and I were all over them the next morning. Like, was it Ibis? Was it this? We're yeah. pulling sounds. We're pull I mean, we're trying to debunk they grilled them. them. I mean, I think everybody did. Were, yeah, I mean, everybody they was told their story, and but everyone was like, "We got to grill them." Yeah, but <laughs> but Max and I were like, "What is this?" And then I'll let you guys go with what you had happened to you. And then the well, what, what, what stuff, and I got. Oh, oh. What stuck out to me about Mike Hughes' story was <laughs> he's an outdoorsman. He knows all the sounds out there in the in the swamp. Hearing the bipedal crunching, he, he said he heard the bipedal footsteps, and he said, "I I know the difference." And that that stuck out to me about him telling his story, and that's why when I, when I put out my corridor video, I wanted his whole that whole experience uncut and just just his reaction to to him really explaining it very well the next morning um but that stuck out to me was hearing that those bipedal crunches because like like me and like me and max know uh you step on a dead palm from or something is running from you that that it is deafening it is so loud when you're running through that those that thick thick foliage and, and me being a northeastern guy uh and 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 being an avid hiker 
going down there, I felt like a greenhorn. I, I felt like out of my element uh, with all the different noises, uh, getting used to all the different bird sounds, um, uh, getting used to being careful where you step at night to where the, the, the rattlesnakes that I'm hearing pygmy rattlesnakes. I'm like, well, what's a pygmy rattlesnake? Well, they don't have rattlers, but they stay right off the trail. So be careful where you step. And I'm like, oh, oh man. So I'm seeing all these Florida guys. They got their snake, their little, uh, their snake boots, their little protectors. <laughs> I didn't know. I had no idea. So I just, I felt like a green horn. So that, I, I know that first night, I, I remember even saying it up to the GoPro. I'm like, I am just soaking in all the sounds, getting yeah. used to the, to, 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 to the, the sounds we're going to hear over and over and over again. And man, what a different world it was down there. Uh, it was such, what a great experience too. To, to, get, to get 25 people down in one area from all different backgrounds, filmmakers, content creators, uh, researchers. It was, I, I was saying it with Alex, it's probably something that will probably never happen again. And it's just, it, what, what a great experience. I mean, you basically Ooh. had the Northeast and Florida. I mean, it was it was really, <laughs> you know. So, like, and the whole Northeast so, is here right now. We've got one yeah. Florida guy. <laughs> so when, in the Northeast, I have to say, things are going to maul you. Things are going to, like, bite you. You're going to bleed out. In the South, you don't even know these things are biting you, and you're going to die, know. like, two weeks later from some kind of poison. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not cool. That's not the way you do it. <laughs> Give me a I, bear. I, I'm good I, with that. I, I know the toughest animal we hear in the woods around here is this. <laughs> <laughs> there, are, there are a couple asses down there, too. So. Uh, oh, this show went down. Well, the, the, it's <laughs> always good to know if, uh, if the rattlesnakes are thick where you're going. You know, it's, it's no fun to manage sure. the woods with and, rattlesnakes and, and, hanging off both legs. And, and the well, spiders just and the scorpions and the alligators. too. I mean, come on. Yeah. yeah. Turtles. Yeah, the I mean, gators the turtles definitely. Is the yeah. Thing. <laughs> um, wait till you go. Me kayak, and Max. Wait till you yeah. go kayaking and about seven snakes just drop in the canoe. You're so. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I see. See in New York, the animals send you a postcard before they attack you. In in Florida, yeah, oh. that, that that's stuff that'll just yeah. kill MFers. Just. Uh, I, I know what Matt's talking about, and you'll experience that here in yeah. Kentucky too. Uh, if you get on the river, yeah. don't yeah. don't be don't be taking your flat bottom boat underneath any trees hanging out over the river because you'll get a <laughs> death from above. You know. Okay, so I tell you, <laughs> when Matt Matt when Matt was having his whole big speech before we went out, and he's telling me he got bluff charged by a deer, I'm like, what hmm. what the heck? Where are we? Like, <laughs> what kind of animal does the charges a human? The thing is, the and deer's like, out there are like two feet. I know. <laughs> I'm like, I drove over 900 miles to get killed at night by some animal. <laughs> Not a deer, it's a jackalope. It's... Oh and then, and then it was the black cat thing the month before, in okay. the area where you all heard mumbling. I, I still got to hear this story about. Yeah, you guys. Brian, gotta Brian running out with a knife in one hand. <laughs> Brian, instant, instant, instant replay, <laughs> like. <laughs> Okay, Dude, so it was real, just real, real, real set quick, the scene, Matt. Real quick recap. <sighs> Thursday night, the first night, I give the speech. I know people want to go out and just play in the dark the first night, so <laughs> I gave no directions. Say, go explore. Tomorrow, we're going out in the daylight. Daylight, you're going to find your position. I'm going to hand out the Apple Air Tags, and we're going to rock and roll. Well, so Thursday night, if I had to pick someone number one and number two on the list that nothing's going to happen to. They're not going to come back with a story. They're not going to have any bullshit. They're just going to, hey, nice hike, Matt. Thanks a lot. This is a lot of fun in a little one-mile area. Great. Lots of fun. Would be Mike from their local station. He's the guy, along with Stan, that when I went out with him, everything was just a squirrel. Just a squirrel. Just a squirrel. <laughs> so he comes back with a story, and I went, are you pulling my leg? And he goes, no, no, no. He's all, I went, are, no, seriously, are you pulling my leg? He goes, no, no, no. And, he, and then I start rolling on him. I got a little tape of him telling the story at night to the guy. So I wake up the next morning, and then I see them getting drilled 
by max power <laughs> and and alex and mike they're like playing these i went oh no this is a fight this is a bad idea but i told everybody you're going to get challenged but it's going to be in a polite not online type of way and they're going at them i, so I max, wasn't going at them i was asking so, questions this so is max, <laughs> max comes by me max comes by me about noon that the day we were going to do the big light up the globe experiment with my blinkies for my final video for me. And he goes, it's just Ibises. He, he just heard Ibises. <laughs> or they, they sound like old ladies all the time. <laughs> and so now Friday night's the night and they go out. Go ahead, Max. <laughs> I, I honestly, I did hear it first. Actually, Chewy heard something first. His ears went up and started looking. Right, and we saw that that Chewy's the dog, right? <laughs> it's not like dog the dog. Dog. Which one is it? But his ears go yeah, up, and it's he starts looking down the table. Yeah, it's for you. There he is. <laughs> Tell the story, Chewy. He loves your show, Steve. He's usually awake for the whole thing. I swear. But Chewy's ears go up. He's looking down the trail at something. So I look down and I see like the shadow. And then, so now I'm like, okay, because nothing, nothing had happened. How long were we there, Brian? Like an hour an and a half? An hour and a half of dead silence. Yeah. And, or just like the sounds of the woods. There were crickets. There were all those kind Barred of. Barn owls chattering. Yeah. The usual so sounds. Once, once, once Chewy wakes up, I'm like, oh, geez, maybe I ought to start paying attention. <laughs> And I hear, I hear this mumbling off in the woods. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, that's ideal. <laughs> and I'm excited now because I'm going to be able to prove that, you know, Mike from the night before didn't hear it. I think I even said that to you, Brian. I think I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, that's Ibis. And then, like, my face stops being so smug and excited and i start getting a little like is that ibis <laughs> what is and i start you know looking at that uh brian and kind of like do you hear that what do you think that is and he's you know kind of like oh yeah maybe that's maybe that's ibis maybe is that mumbling brian what is it he's like oh yeah well maybe it's mumbling and he's like you know listening and he if you've ever seen the guy listen, and you don't see many people listen, but he was kind of like really <laughs> trying to figure this out. <laughs> and uh, and finally, I don't know. Did you suggest we pulled out the bird app? You right? pulled out the phone, and yeah, we're like, let's let's see if you can pick it up with the bird app. Yeah, and <laughs> and we did. <laughs> and so I'm like, all right, here we go. We're gonna prove it's ibis, and it took a little while. That little spinning wheel. You know, going around and around, and the two of us are standing there, the just staring the at the phone, staring at the screen, <laughs> like waiting. You know, and I couldn't wait for it to come up and say, "Uh oh, is that me?" I couldn't wait. Oh, the message. I couldn't wait, like for it to say Ibis, and all of a sudden it comes up, and the two of us are like out in the field looking at a screen. Who knows what's going on around us? And Brian, Brian's face, before I could really see it and realize it, Brian's face kind of goes. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks at me like, holy shit. <laughs> and he reads it and it said, it said human, homo sapien. And the two of us were like, whoa, that, that, that's nuts. And so, I, I start texting Al I, so I, I know Alex is up in the tree. I'm up in the I'm, I'm up hey, hey, I'm 15 so feet in a tree, right? <laughs> and they're like something is running near us, and I just I get this text that says came up homo capian on the bird <laughs> app. Hey. I'm I, mean, I, I have to, I am holding Chewy, <laughs> so I am texting, and I'm like, it's gonna spell check it. It's gonna spell check it. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it didn't spell check it, so it came up Homo Capian. <laughs> I'm like, hey, if we discover this species, we're calling it Homo Capian. <laughs> Thanks, Apple. Thanks for that one. Yeah, but so and yeah, Matt, it, and it Matt, was weird. And Max, what did you say about Chewie's typing skills? With <laughs> well, that, that comes later because now, oh, okay. <laughs> now we got to figure out what the heck this thing is, and they're they're texting back and forth because. Well, it's obviously I a homo sapien. <laughs> I had seen something cross the road, and um, Alex, didn't you get a blip on the therm? Yeah, I got something when I was up in the tree. It wasn't when you guys had this thing going on, but I saw something really distant just move. I, I mean, because there was, I, I'm again, I'm 15 or so feet up in the tree, and there's kind of some fields in front of me. So Mike Ann was sitting down at the bottom of the tree. And he was just kind of hanging out. He was getting attacked by mosquitoes. But I'm up in the tree. I'm scanning kind of straight out. And that's when I saw just this little blip on the therm. I have no idea what it is. I mean, it could have been a hog. could have been anything, right? It was just a small blur. But it was very far away. And I knew it wasn't where Max and Brian were, although they were to the right of where it was. So that I, I kind of – I think I texted him, hey, I, I got something on the therm. Well, I can't tell. And you got to realize uh, the screen is this big and it's night. So you can't really see very excuse well. Me, excuse me, Alex. Thing. You you now have the middle square, so that means you're Alice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. But yes, yeah, so I, I did That was it. And then they, they kind of were texting us about it. But yeah. Yeah. Well, after we after after that whole bird app thing, uh, <laughs> we started hearing the mumbling, but it got a little louder. And not just louder, <laughs> in two different directions. So it was sensory overload for us for the for those yeah. minutes coming. Um, just trying to figure out what the hell, what the heck could could do that because yeah. it because we're trying to explain the sounds, uh, especially to Eric. Now, what I like about Eric is he got in touch with me probably a day after I got home, and was it was sending me different sounds like, oh, what is it? You know, did it sound like this? Did it sound like that? And and I was like, oh, similar but different. And the last one he sound, I mean, to me, I explained it. It was almost like Cousin It or Charlie Brown's Teacher, but slowed down and a deeper tone. And it was, it was, it's the tones that threw me off. And and we're trying to say, could it be two different animals talking at this, like chattering at the same time? But for that to happen, the timing would have had to have been perfect for that mumble to occur if it was between two animals making that sound it repeatedly too in two different directions was kind of throwing us off so after it i was kind of slowed down a little and we're like well let's start walking towards the guys um that's when uh if max wants to talk about you know what happened after we started walking down the path <laughs> Yeah, nothing happened as we started walking down the path. You know, we were trying yeah. to find it again. So we, we started moving around looking for it and following like the outer trails around. Yeah. <clears throat> and then I think we we're getting bored of that and we started mm -hmm. to head back. So we took a turn onto the trail that would head back towards where uh, Alex and Mike were. Mm -hmm. And we got how many feet down that, that trail? Not many. Like, no, right. Like, a little while after that, that fork, that yeah, that so we fork. turned, we took a few steps, and all of a sudden, right next to us, something, and I say, like it hopped up, it hopped up, and it took off, <laughs> fast. like fast. fast, fast and loud and big, <laughs> you know, and that kind of yeah, that scared both of us. That's where Max pulls. He, he, he's had his knife drawn already. <laughs> when he I, got I didn't up, have it drawn. I had it unclipped. <laughs> but the second that happened, it was it's out. funny because we were sitting in that area for an hour and a half. So I'm putting my GoPro in my pack. I am I am packing everything in my pack, so, and we're just gonna walk because it started. To, it was just it got quiet again. So we're like, we'll, we'll walk a little and we'll just eventually meet up with Alex and Mike. 
So when, <laughs> when that crash happens and I see yeah, he's got his out, I'm trying to reach in my backpack for my knife as I'm gripping Chewie who's trying to go toward the noise. <laughs> so I throw my leash at Max. I throw the leash at him and I pull the knife out. And I was white knuckles from that point all the way back to the campsite. I did not and, like and I, my I have to say that I don't know what it is. It was probably pretty intimidating to, if that was a Bigfoot, but the sound of that knife coming out of his sheath, it was like a samurai. <laughs> like, holy smokes, is that a big knife? I look over, it's about this big. <laughs> yeah. Like, like if you were at a restaurant, you would have picked a teeth. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but so well after this happens we start to hear we start to, what do we hear like a whoop yeah we heard we us? heard a whoop and that that really start that's when i oh my god i had a jaw drop moment again i was i i it just when when we went back to that area with with mike and and <laughs> and he is discussing how that where that thing whatever was there was behind a tree yeah so yeah. intelligent enough to stay hidden behind a freaking tree and and of course the thick palm fronds right on a game trail so when mike went back and he's analyzing the whole area and showing the different game trails oh and the matted down grass and, 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 like yes, right the, and, and him the saying like this is a perfect kill point for a predator hunting and right then and there, I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> we, were, we were we were walking through like a kill zone, <laughs> a hunting zone." But man, what a, what a what a crazy night! But that mumbling, I'll never forget those those mumbles. That was that was different. That was that was different. And and of course, me being a greenhorn, um, I, I I didn't know how to take how to take it. I, I I was more Max at least has been down there more than me and knows knows the wild like run. a little better yeah. than me <laughs> all right he's been were down you, there more than me <laughs> were you guys able to were you guys able to record yeah. this or did you just that, use it for the that's bird the app? thing max doesn't carry yeah. any kind of recorder or anything yes. and when i i just packed yeah. i packed everything away and i was just walking i i didn't think to we, like matt it, like like, like, like matt like larson said put, put you know keep the gopro on your head and yeah. i i didn't even I, I wish I did because we would have we would have got all of that on there, especially See? the crash that animal running away. Yeah. And believe me, they were berated about carrying audio recorders after that. And you know, I got my H one N one in the mail right you know right after I got back home. So it's it it was a live and learn experience to always be prepared. Yeah, and, and so. it was a big gear thing. I mean, you know, everybody had a different camera, so we were talking cameras, we were talking different recorders, how Matt carries his stuff on his head, you know, kind of <laughs> looks like, you know, Mickey Mouse there, you know, I got some great videos of that, you know. Hey, he looks like an idiot, but it's a great idea. <laughs> it worked, yeah. You know, he's live listening, um, and uh, for you guys, uh, take a look at what Christy sent, and I sent it to you guys in there, because yeah. she picked up on something. But like Max, he does. So Max said he had it on his phone, right? You recorded some of it on your phone. I recorded it on that bird app to yeah. analyze it. So it's somewhere in there. I'm not the most technical kind of person. I can't even type. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I really can't. You, like I was in the chat earlier, and I I think I misspelled every word I wrote. So I'm not the most technical person. It is in my phone. Uh, and I did record it and have it analyzed, so hopefully I can pull it back out. Uh, it's well, up here. And well, that's in, kind of in all fairness, nobody expected to be tracked by a homo capian. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just glad I got to share that, whatever happened that night. At least I was with someone else. And you know we can we uh, we can have fun about it and laugh about it. It was a what funny was moment so interesting sure. too was what was when you guys talked to Matt and or uh, yeah when you talked to Mike and Christian afterwards. How did that conversation go? Because they obviously had something similar happen. Joy, Mike, uh, it, this it blew is called away. the big apology. <laughs> it, it to yeah, I was so good. I wish I got Sorry, that. I busted your ball. <laughs> <laughs> but could you please define weird, weird, that weird. Note? 
it, it, so yeah, I'd like it, the the telltales were <laughs> for all of these were Brian's faces because he doesn't hold his emotions. Like it comes right across. So uh, as as we're talking to uh, Mike, I think at some point somebody said, "Hey, could you could you mimic that sound?" And so Mike <laughs> does the sound that we heard. To the T, do a T. I like, was like, perfect. <laughs> that was me. And, and his face literally was like, <laughs> <laughs> like everybody instantly knew. Wow, that that was the sound. So, and the next the next day, Trackway is talking about <laughs> uh, like hearing something similar, and I said, "Well, can you repeat it? Could you imitate it?" Yep. And again, you know, Trackway makes the noise and Brian's face just goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I got to just put fun. Chewy on. I got to get off. It, it, it's it, a different mic. Stick the camera it's, it's, it's on Chewy. Different, different, different mic. But did you guys think it sounded almost uh, like a like a chant? Like a, I wouldn't like, say a chant. No, it, it almost seemed like someone talking down to someone. It was just, it was different. It was, the tone was, <sighs> it, like, it was almost like playing a, a melted cassette tape. It, is, oh. it was very odd. Was it it's kind of a, gurg I, was it kind of a gurgling sound? No, it didn't gurgle. Okay. It was okay. just, it was almost like, like I said, like Charlie Brown's teacher, you know, like the wah, wah, yeah. like the wah, 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 it, yeah. like that, but it, in a tone, in a, in a human type tone yeah, like it, a verbal it, type tone and, what and it wasn't right off. repetitive do you know what i mean no, it, like it was different it was different over and over again it'll repeat it wasn't the same it was different yeah and that's what that's why i just kept having those facial expressions like, <laughs> like those holy shit expressions <laughs> yeah. well if that's like, like Bill can do it mentioned earlier yeah. oh, i had downloaded a bunch of bird sounds from the you know the macaulay <laughs> Library, library and, yeah. yeah, and basically, I ran them all through a bunch of audio filters. I was like, Let me get it out to these guys while it's still pretty fresh in their minds. And every time Brian had come back, oh, it was kind of like this one, but a little slower, a little deeper. And so, I would just, you know, change my settings, lower the pitch, and mess with the sounds, you know, maybe layer something else on top of it. And eventually, I got one that he was like, That's pretty close, but still this one's too repetitive and to me you know i don't know what that means all i know is it means it wasn't any of these birds that we know were right in that area you know because so. i listened over and over and over and over again and i'm so glad you got in touch with me so fast because it was so fresh in my mind to where if we talked about it now it, it wouldn't be obviously it just it happened now almost two months ago so to be able to talk with you right after it, you know, getting home and <clears throat> kind of letting it. Yeah. Well, that's what, as I was my like mind. uploading all my footage and everything, I basically, you know, I would just quickly scrubbed through it and then just started making notes of what happened because, you know, I won't <clears throat> get around to editing it for at least another month. And it's like, well, I want to, I'm going to, yeah, forget no, that was a great idea. Right so and, uh, even Mike, uh, Mike even sent me stuff too. And it was just it was it just wasn't the same from what I we, heard that we that do night. have a, uh, a a request. Uh, does uh, finding the trackway does he know that sound? Because people have been asking him to uh, mimic the sound. Bill, you have a yeah. Um, uh, just to clarify, this is actually been told once before, and it was on Jeff Harding's show, Pine Island Research, Halloween night, twenty twenty two. And uh, my experience at the time was a retelling a story of something that happened back in the 90s. I'm out hunting. I'm just walk, looking up a hill, still got a canopy about 30 yards away. Up above me, there's a soil bank. All of a sudden, this oak tree just starts shaking. And you hear this. <laughs> and then two other much higher pitched voices came into the fray and then it just went back and forth for a while and i sat there and was uh, dumbfounded as to what it was hmm. gotcha okay copy that yeah because uh you were yes. asking for the trackway version of sound please so okay 
Yeah, it was pretty much just a deep literal, arr, 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 and it just kind of it went on for a couple minutes. Uh, at the time, I'd never heard anything like it, and I was just running through every animal I could think of uh, in the area at the time. Uh, I never saw what produced it. I it never. I didn't feel scared or anything. I just, you know, at the time, I kind of ran through <laughs> bobcat turkeys. Maybe I don't know. I didn't know what could yeah. shake an oak tree like that, though. Right, exactly. I don't think a turkey could. Um, no. Uh, so, Bill, uh, what was your experience? Did you have any experiences while you were down in Florida? Anything interesting? Well, the main thing I had is I had birds keep coming at my head. So every time I went out, I almost got nailed by an owl in the face. Or you know, the first night, almost one went by so close I could see its eyeball. Wow. Uh, I almost, we almost got nailed. Uh, the second night we went out, we went past these great big areas. We kept Me and my wife kept going to the south. So uh, we went past these areas of stagnant water and uh, you would just watch this cloud of mosquitoes that just kept getting bigger and bigger, chasing you down the trail. And at one point we were practically running to get away from them. And, uh, but, you know, we dumped our gear. We, we, uh, <laughs> we, we sprayed up and we was like, okay, we're going to sit right here for the night. And uh, we sat there, we really watched, listened, and a lot of the stuff, you know, in the moment, I didn't notice anything other than um, the first night we ran into an area where I walked through and I saw my breath. And I'm like, you don't, that shouldn't happen in Florida. So we recorded that and we started looking into a bunch of different reasons for that. You know, what, what could have happened? Um, and I'm figuring, you know, artesian water cooling the air and, you know, dropping it below dew point. So we did a, we've done a deep dive into, uh, scenarios as to why you'd see your breath um then uh, we got down the trail like i said everybody went to the north we were actually to this at this point we went more back to the west and uh, was just standing there and just out of the blue i you know i asked you know there's something here can you give us a knock okay well we'll leave if you give us a knock we hear a faint knock and i'm like well you know there's probably somebody else walking through the woods but we said we'd leave let's leave and that's about as that's really you know the only other thing that i ran into was when we came back the second night um we ran into mike and christian going back out and we talked to them for a little bit on the trail and they were pointing out where alex was and as we left them and we were going forward something went behind us and that was, I don't, that was about it. I didn't know what it was. I didn't see what it was. I just, you know, deer or something. I don't know what it was exactly. We had seen uh, two deer going out to where we staged. And uh, the deer didn't make a whole lot of noise going, you know, when we jumped them out. But really in the moment, you know, we didn't really, um, feel anything other than birds even the third night i had something almost whack me in the face Are so you, uh, uh were you like uh carrying sardines in your hat or something the helmet was attracting it was a the helmet the crash helmet <laughs> yeah. it was a, it was a hel yeah it probably was a it, helmet it, it, it wasn't as bad as matt's helmet it looked like a dead squirrel on top of his helmet <laughs> <laughs> that explains it Either that or somebody taped like a uh, some bird seed to the top of his helmet too. <laughs> and we had a lot of we had a lot of uh, thermals, yeah, a lot of good thermals out there too. So now uh the last person I want to get to, and then I want to get to the questions because I so far I think we have six questions stage for the group. We're trying to keep them to towards the end. Was I wanted to get Eric's impression is not really being a Bigfoot researcher. What did you think of? this whole thing i mean obviously it was a great time i mean that was a, it was a fun time camping at least yeah yeah it was a lot of fun uh another thing before i get to that um max and i actually the first night we were we got there a night before everybody else um and we were just shooting the shit you know uh, around the campfire and off 
on the far side of the campsite, we just heard this tremendously loud crash, like something just knocked over a tree. It could have just been a tree randomly falling, I guess. But when we went over in that area, like a day or two later, I didn't see anything that looked like it could have been, you know, but again, it could have been a hog, a bear, who knows what, you know, but um, yeah, for me, it, you know, it's funny. I was mostly interested in just meeting and talking to all the people and hearing all of their different perspectives. And even like the the first night when uh, Mike and Christian heard their mumbling sounds, I was thinking about going with them. And then all of a sudden they were like, oh, we're just going to go and sit still. And I know I'm not good at sitting still. So, you know, like every deer season, I'm, I like to still hunt. I'm not, I'm not just sitting in a deer stand, you know, well, in the Northeast shiver in there, I would have just been sweating, but I was like, all right, you guys are sitting still. I'm not your guy. So I'm going to go off with Alex and Brian and Mike. Um, and then the following night, I believe it was, or no. Yeah. I guess maybe the night that Max and Brian, I just hung hung back at the campsite and I had a, you know, a chat with this guy named James who was super friendly um, you know, got to hear his ideas and just hearing everybody's differing ideas about, you know, whatever it is they they might be looking for. You know, some people like are just, I mean, I guess kind of like myself, I just find it an interesting topic. I've never seen any anything that I might even mistake for Bigfoot um, when I've gone out to areas where people have said they've had encounters. I've heard things and had experiences that I could convince myself were Bigfoot. But then I also like, you know, that wasn't something throwing a rock in the water. That was just a beaver slapping its tail at three o'clock in the morning that woke me up, you know, um, those types of things. I could, I have rational known explanations for them. So it was interesting hearing all of the different people, how many people, a lot of people have had sightings or strange encounters with, you know, glowing orbs in the woods. Some people have seen, you know, Bigfoot like creatures. Um, some people haven't, and they just find it fascinating and decided to go out and try to learn about it and then just really fell in love with the topic. You know, I, I found that aspect interesting, just to kind of not necessarily the what's out there, but who are the people that are out there looking and what is it that that drives them and what's their different approaches? You know, to me, that was the, the fun part of it. Now, you know, it's kind of funny because four of you guys, uh, including myself, we were all there for that Buck Mountain call that we had, that whoop call that was really interesting. And that, that I, I tell you what, that has energized me. So everybody, of course, has the universal invite to come up, you know, in September as well when we do the next next one out there in the same area. So you all have that invite there. So, Well, it's uh, funny you, you mentioned that because I, if I'm not mistaken, when Mike Hughes was recounting what they heard uh, that first night, he also got a, a howl. He played it back. He had like a you know, a Bluetooth speaker. To, he was mostly playing music through, but he was playing the sounds for us so we could all hear it. And the howl that he heard, I had recorded something that sounded almost identical that I luckily I had on my phone and I played for him. And it was actually the time when I was just talking about where, <clears throat> you know, I'm passing off the splash in the water as a beaver right. slapping its tail. I caught this strange... It, it's what not a coyote it's not a wolf it could definitely be some side of some sort of dog maybe a you know koi wolf or a coyote dog hybrid because there are a lot of those in the adirondacks but yeah mike had caught that same night he heard the mumbling this weird howl that i had almost an identical recording from literally across the country you know wow Okay, let's uh, let's get to some questions here, uh, and anybody can take them. Uh, Kaiju Ninja in 1985 says, "Not trying to be negative by asking this question, but do you think, I guess, to Matt, do you think having a large group of people might seem intimidating to the Sasquatch?" Well, um, the idea and and all those 
all those crazy thoughts cross my mind. Don't you know, you know, it's too big of a group. Don't you know they see IR? Don't you know? But what I knew that the Sasquatch didn't know, <laughs> actually they did know, that there's no one working in this area that's in Bigfoot. Right. Right. And so I, my idea to do the, the 12 team breakout of twos was um, to catch them off guard. They have maybe are used to one or two groups being out doing a night sit and a blind or whatever. But we had people up in trees. We had people in blinds. We had people moving. <laughs> we had people doing all sorts of things. So, um, and then of course we had Brian and Chewy out there. Um, the idea was, would something be caught off guard? They may see a group. Let's just say they're out there. And I'm just speaking like, okay, they see a group and they go, oh, let's move around this group. And they go, oh, shit, there's another group, you know, 60 yards away. Go this way. Oh, shit, there's a, what the hell's going on? That was the idea was Blitzkrieg. It really was. And and the ringer I had, I really extended an invite to Hellbent Holler. And I really wanted Joe and Jesse as the movers. My idea was to have 12 teams sitting and they be the wild cards because they move so well at night and they have such great night vision cameras was I wanted them to walk that whole two miles, you know, loop catching every trail. And the idea was would Bigfoot, I, I labeled all the I, I tags, um, I, 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 well, I tags, I guess they're called uh, BF1, BF2, BF3. I had them assigned to everyone's phone number. I had them assigned to everyone's position. And the idea was to have someone like a hellbent holler move through an area and would, you know, BF2 catch something and then BF10 pick it up? And would there be a chain of custody in in experiences? And so I, I was kind of testing that whole theory, too, because I've, I've always wondered, seeing these other shows, how come there aren't more of them? You know, if there's only groups of two or one solo, they know where that person is for sure, so they can keep a distance. But if you spread out, keep quiet and sit maybe we would trigger something. And that was the idea concept. And there have been reportings out there. There, Florida's up on the top five. And so I've had people since I've had my channel for three years say, Matt, I saw a monkey run across the road at this location. Is it anywhere near your location? And it's a mile and a half from where we were. And so there is a, a class one sighting um, directly across the river. Um, there's sightings in the Cypress Creek Reserve. If you follow the Florida corridor where we were in Hillsborough and Pasco County, it starts up and then it comes down, down the University of South Florida, and it swings right back up and then goes out into the Green Swamp. All through there, there are Bigfoot sightings. So there's at least six really close by. And I'm also a believer in that many of those reports aren't reported. Because they're rep sure. I've, got, I've gotten more reports to me than what I'm seeing on the BFRO. And I'm sure, sure Alex is probably experiencing the same thing. Well, something interesting that I noticed, just to add real quick to Matt's point, was when we were specifically looking at this location, I remember we were sitting in camp, a bunch of us, and we were looking at the Bigfoot Mapping Project app. And recently, Scott of the Bigfoot Mapping Project, he added John Green's data, which is one of the earliest compiled uh, databases of sightings. And there was a point, I believe it was in the 80s, that John Green went to Florida per the invitation of a researcher. And we were looking at areas west of us where we were, which are now suburban, urbanized, which 30, 40 years ago were extensions of the green swamp and extensions of what this corridor would look like. So, I mean, you look at the, you look at the sightings now and the green ones are the John Green ones. And they just kind of, they're in areas where you'd never expect anything to be because again, this area has been developed in the last four to five decades. So I thought that was really interesting. So there's almost like a consistency of reports. And unfortunately, as Florida's population has continued to go up, these corridors have gotten smaller and smaller and the animal areas have gotten smaller. So I think it goes back to the idea of the choke point. If there was ever a place where you'd be able to get a group of people in there and say, hey, something's moving through here, we might as well give it a try. I don't see the harm in trying it. I think that's what we did. And, and if there's something there, and maybe there is, maybe there isn't, but we sure as heck ran into a lot of other critters. And we weren't out there knocking and screaming. And I mean, Matt kind of set that, that groundwork down and, you know, we, we, at least our, our group of Northeastern guys, you know, we didn't go out knocking or screaming or anything like that. Mm -mm. We sat quiet, 
you know, unless we were like texting each other or using voice to text it. Crap, you know, watch out for the alligator, or, you know, what do we got <laughs> screaming at us, you know. Uh, the one thing that we use that, especially that second night that I find intriguing, is if, um, me and Max heard the two people that were on e-bikes at night. Yes. We heard them go by, and that was Stan. after that, Stan, yep. yeah, after that is when we started getting the action. It was after we heard the e- the e-bikes after they went back, and they were gone. Yeah. Is when we started getting a lot of the action. If I if I may ask, were were they talking while they was riding? I I do not know. Um, it was was it Diane? It was Stan or, and that lady. I don't remember her name. Mary Ann. Yeah. Mary, yeah. So, yeah, they they had the e-bikes, and normally that area has been a non-e-bike or bike area at all. But what's really weird is when we went in there, they had switched all the signage. They, I almost didn't even recognize the place from the two months I was there before. The road had been graded. Um, it had been flooded, and I've never seen that area with so much water in it. So it it I was totally flipped and turned around the whole time. Um, so they had their e-bikes in there. I wasn't sure if they could have them, but knowing that we had the whole area, there was no one else camping in that area. We had the whole campground to ourselves and you cannot enter that area at night. So I, I, I felt like not that that's a sure thing. I, I understand that, but, um, unless you're a poacher or doing something, you know, you're not supposed to be doing. There's something else I was going to say, um, to Alex's point, the one thing I realized in researching the corridor is that. There are some specific areas where there's a campground that hasn't been opened in 25, 30 years, but it's still being used. Like you can walk back there, you can ride your bike back there, but you can't overnight there. And I find that really interesting. And every time I show up there, either a ranger tells me that there's cameras all through that area. Don't be caught here at night. It could be a, just an idle threat. But they didn't say it like that. They just said, well, you know, there's cameras all through through this area. So, so just be careful. And that's after they knew who I was and that I was with a news, news Channel 8 station. I, I dumped the News Channel 8 because I was kind of like, I, I kind of felt like they would leave me alone if I said, hey, I'm with News Channel 8. I'm not doing a story for the station, but I am you know, a videographer with the station. And this is my, this is what I'm doing on the side as a photojournalist, just to see if my, my theory is if something is this and move through here. So real quick, what I want to say to address Alex is I know that this area with all the um, encroachment, what I do know is this area has not been encroached on in a hundred years. Plus, obviously if it hadn't been a hundred years, it hadn't been encroached on that. The encroachment has happened already happened 70, 80 years ago. The people have that had had cabins there that I have talked to two of the people that have been forced out of the area. I'm calling target zero, ground zero. They were forced out of their cabins for eminent domain so they could build big mansions on the water. That never happened. So they lost their cabins. The campground went quiet. It's still a functioning bathroom. It's the cleanest bathroom campground you'd ever want to visit. You can ride your bike in there during the day, but you have to be out at night and you can't camp ground. You can't camp there. So I started researching and trying to find photos. There's no photos online of this campground. Nothing exists. So I reached out and found people. Can you give me a tour of this place? Can you tell me your experiences 60 years ago at, at this campground or in this area? And it just gets weirder and weirder and weirder. So the point is, yes, this is a one mile to a two mile choke point that leads through, but it's been a quiet for hundreds of years. It's been a quiet. It's not going this way. It's going the the developments outside the corridor. It hasn't been in the corridor. Nothing's happened in the corridor in 60 years. So that's a quiet, safe zone other than if you're a hog. There is hog hunting there. So I that's what I wanted to say to that. Yeah, I would love to see you do an expose in that at some point down the road. You know, what the weird stuff was, what the, you know, either in book form or video form. That would yeah. be an awesome, awesome read. Well, I'm starting to wonder if these uh, camping areas that are no longer allowed to be camping areas is not more common than people think. Because I know there, there has been a few camping areas around in this area that were... Uh, 
you could go down there and spend a week or whatever you wanted to do. And now they're listed as day use areas only and yeah. with no camping. So right. It seems kind of odd that they want to keep people out of there at night. Now. Well, the same thing in my research area. One, there used to be a total of uh, 12 campsites. Right. And right now there is only a total use of one, two, three campsites left right. on that on that particular mm -hmm. road. They seem to have moved all the main camping to the uh to the east of that location yeah so uh, it's very curious as to why like uh when i first started there was a camp 12 when i first started coming down there and that was the last of the campsites and now we have camp 8 9 10 and uh that's it there's no uh camps one through one through seven are gone camps you know camp 12 is gone uh camp 11 is gone and uh the rest of the area on that road is day use only so it's very interesting uh, to see why that goes on, uh, especially when you have an untouched piece of land. I mean, this land was right. untouched. So yeah. very, very good point. And it seems to be more of a commonality than it does. Um, uh, and it's strange because not that I'm big into government conspiracy, but, uh, you know, it's in an area of uh, they always seem to happen in areas close to Bigfoot research. Right. Where there's been sightings. Right. <laughs> Right. So, and they also are still maintained because the area that I found my trackway, my Bigfoot footprint trackway, was in one of those closed parks. But even though you couldn't stay there, it, everything was very well maintained. Yep. Yeah. Right. So, right. well, and the thing is, is the camping area is that's been slowly eliminated. Um, is between uh, the big parking area for where the camping area and the trails start in another section of the park, but it's also between that and the day use area, which is down towards the bottom of it. So this area is in between the upper parking lot and the day use area. And that used to be all camping, and they've limited it down to three camping spots out of originally a dozen. So very interesting why that happens. Um, a couple other questions, uh, Matt, is this the area where the gator almost got you? <laughs> There's a gator there. That's the size of a Volkswagen, a small. Is that Christy? That's Christy. Yeah. So, uh, no, it, 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 no, no, I, I don't. No offense, Christy, but you'd think you'd know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Well, she's picking up on some other stuff in the area gentlemen, that we'll talk about offline. So. You know how she yeah. did you, Matt X, once before. So hey, wait, wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. I, I, I think I hear the gator now. <laughs> oh, those are gators. I'm sorry. Oh, that's yeah. um, next question, uh, Brian, Brian and Max. Uh, when the subject fled, did it sound bipedal or quadrupedal? That Where, it, that was it was so hard to tell because of the crashing through the palm fronds. It was loud. It was just too loud for me to 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 say it was two or four legged. I couldn't loud, tell. Loud, heavy, and fast. Yeah. Well, you have in in your video, Brian. You have footage of me stumbling <laughs> almost up to my ass, and uh, uh, it was and nothing. It's just like it, three or four stumps and. I mean, it, it's just the loudest noise you could imagine. Yeah, and, and your steps didn't even compare to what we heard that night. Yeah. And uh, John Sasquatch, Mr. Mm -hmm. Adirondacks, asked, do you think it was down low or cider crawling? It was behind a tree. It was be That's all we know is it was behind a tree on a game trail. I I saw a shadow, and, and I would yeah, say – earlier. Early, and what do you think? That was maybe an hour earlier, half maybe a half hour. No, because that, that one the that one was long and low. But the thing that got up and ran, I could I could physically see a shadow move off. How tall it was, I don't know. It was probably shorter than me, but taller than I would think, like a hog would be. Yeah, because I didn't see the shadow. He he asked, he's like, "Did you just see that?" And I said, "No, I did not." Did an, like, did I, anybody after the event go back to that area and see if there was any? pathway or, or uh, oh yeah we went back the very next day we all did first yeah. thing now yeah. mike is shaking his head yes can you and mike you you obviously are like you have that cat uh the cat that ate the canary look on your face 
<laughs> oh, we we went back. Can we had drones up. We we did the whole trail. Look for the. That's got a trail. camera out there now. Got, yeah, I mean. Yeah, so we have we have a camera out there running now. It's been running for six weeks, oh. and and so this is wind trigger right here, and I'll show you a night version here. This is all wind from the wind here. It's just firing the battery. I'm going out tomorrow to change the batteries because of because this happened. Go. But there you go. Here's here's uh, there you go. And when you shine a light into those palm fronds right. at night, you can't see a thing. I couldn't see anything. We shined a light in there at night. I couldn't see anything. I mean, it's just palmettos and and yeah, brush. And it's, yeah. And, and you got to realize in the daytime when we went out there, we're being warned. Hey, there's there's snakes hiding and they hide in this kind of terrain. So we, right. you know, we're trying to circle around the tree and look everywhere. We're very cautiously looking where we're stepping. So it was just kind of weird. Uh, the knowing the danger could be anywhere. I mean, you could step on the wrong palmetto frond that was down on the ground and there could be a, a cottonmouth underneath or a pygmy rattlesnake or some other Florida horror. Or, or, a, or a wasp. Nest. Well, well, at least we know. There'll Those be are no, fun. <laughs> at least we know there'll be no Adirondack barking spiders. <laughs> barking you know, and there are a few of them. We, there we are a few of them. Yeah. You know, a lot of interesting things where even we, I was, you know, me running the UV light and, we got that bellflower there that we yellow bellflower hit it with the, the UV light. Yeah, that was cool. Popped up green. It looked like a set of eyes sitting back in the woods. <laughs> oh, wow. And Matt hit it with, with the red light, you know, and I don't remember Creepy. who got it. I don't know if Eric got it or Brian got it. Somebody got it yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. I put it on I put it on my on the yeah. I put it up. You know, it's it's kind of interesting, but yeah. So, you know, those backs, <gasps> you know, in the yeah. mic photo. Orbs, hey, or I'm even here. orbs. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that, unfortunately, with the computer, it doesn't do it quite justice, but it was absolutely interesting. How weird is that? Yeah. Creepy. It's like eyes. Imagine seeing that in the distance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you, we, can't, you can't see that flash, what we were seeing. It was just eyes. Yeah. It, yeah. Right. But we broke that area down. I mean, we, we, mm -hmm. we tracked it out for, you know, put somebody behind a tree. I went down to the choke point at the trail. You know, found the different game trails that were coming out of there. We marked those, videotaped those, pictures of those. Um, you know, we put the drones up. You could see the hog trails going through. There were yep. punches of hog hair in the trail, you know, for somebody to go, oh, we got Bigfoot hair. No, you could tell there's some hog trail through there, um, you know, and, and again, watching that gopher tortoise do, tortoise do you know, Mach 10 down the trail. So <laughs> I, I couldn't believe at. it followed us down the trail. I couldn't believe it yeah. <laughs> until it saw Chewy and then it, it kind of. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's awesome. And Chewy looking at it, all of a sudden he's like, Whoop! Oh, that first reaction was great. Funny. It was great to get that on film. <laughs> Very funny. When I had my office assistant who's sacked out now behind me because he's lazy, um, uh, one day I had him out. And all of a sudden, I take, I see him take a jump backwards, like three feet, just right over. And I look down, and there's a toad on the ground. And he thought it was a rock, <laughs> and apparently it looked up at him, and he was like, ah. so dog's reactions are awesome. Um, last question is, did the sounds sound anything like the uh, Sierra Sound Samurai chat? I, I was talking to Trackway about this earlier today, and I don't happen to think that they did. The sounds he heard, he did compare to them. So I, I'd love to know what Brian has to say about that. No, no. To where to what Trackway the the sound he made that sounds like the Samurai Chat. Not not what I heard. No, no, not at all. Nope. The the. If I may say, and I don't want to offend anyone out there in Bigfoot world, but the, the samurai chatter, the samurai speak, if you've ever been in New England where we have larger bears than you guys do down in Florida, oftentimes a mother bear, when there's a predator around or a larger bear who may want her cubs out of the picture, will run her cubs up a tree or back into the den or whatever. And she will stand there and pretty much swear and confront anything that comes along. And it's a, it's a, 
gibberish kind of blah, 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 which is not far from what we heard, but what we heard was more of a cranky someone being like, like if you, you know, I don't know, maybe sent your grandfather so, to his room or something. So I, I don't know if you guys have heard the entire uh, uh, files of the Sierra Sounds. Uh, I happen to have both of the recordings. We're not as privileged oh. as you, Steve. Oh, no, I, I bought them. <laughs> I, 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 I bought them. I bought them. Uh, or rich. It. Yeah, no, I'm not rich. But believe me, I'm this so This is why you can't. never have me on your show, by the way. Well, I'd have you on, your, I, I'd have you on the show anytime. Uh, um. No, I, I'm so poor I can't even pay attention half the time. Uh, anyway, uh, um, but there is a portion of the Sierra sounds where you hear some talking back. That's uh, without and then eventually leads into the samurai chatter. Yeah, there's a portion of it before. I think Alex has heard that before too, as well. Yeah, I've heard it. Yeah. Um, so I was just want if you guys haven't heard that, I probably can send it to you guys. Kind of put it in the perspective a bit. So I'll send just, it over. Just you doing that, and Brian, tell me if I'm wrong, but that that does sound a little bit like what we heard. But it, yeah, it yeah. was like a disgruntled old man kind of sent to yeah, his room. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah kind of. Yeah. That, it was yeah. low. It wasn't, wasn't. Yeah. High. Oh, yeah. Not yeah, very yeah. fat. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah I would see we, what I heard in the 90s. It was, you know, it, it didn't. It wasn't that part where the the salmon ride chatter part. It was the lower, the lower right. yeah, right. Um, yeah, there are some really uh, uh, interesting sounds off of that. Um, who knows? Uh, I you know we 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 often talk about people using the samurai chatter as the only reference in the Sierra sounds, right. yeah. and there is so much more to that record that people don't know about. Mm. So I, I you know. Well, just I want to say one quick thing about the whole mumbling incident. We kind of refer to it as mumbling, right? <laughs> so what's interesting is you have four people who, you know, two people who are maybe or three people that were kind of more into the Sasquatch stuff, Brian, Max, and then of course um Mike. He's been into the subject. Matt, you've been out with him before. And then you had the other fourth guy, Christian, who had literally never been camping, I think, before this in the woods, like total city boy. They all experienced the same thing. His first night out. Squatching. Yeah, was experiencing all kinds of wildlife. So my conclusion is, you know, I, I don't know what these guys experienced. I obviously lean more toward the skeptical side in general. There's a lot of animals like we definitely encounter lots of critters. I've spent a lot of time with Brian now in the woods. I know his you know, reactions. He's not one to just hear something. He, I mean, the, he's animated. Brian, <laughs> from the, the day I met him, house. he has been animated, right? And not, no fault of his own. He's animated. It's great. But he doesn't, you know, I've been out with him. We've heard all kinds of critters before. He doesn't, oh, my God, that's a Bigfoot. Like he's not one of those people. Um, so I found it very interesting that he was, you know, to the point where they're both gripping their knives. I can't say what they experienced, obviously, but they experienced something. And I think there's a consistency two nights in a row. Two groups experienced some kind of animal. It could be some sort of a totally benign animal that we just are hearing a weird sound of, in my opinion, absolutely. But I think it kind of goes to what Matt was trying with the experiment. Get all these people out there, see what happens. And this is kind of the aftermath. And that, I think, is a, a mission accomplished in, in some sense. Uh, it's a, a, a social experiment, if anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very and, much a social experiment. Hey, I want to give a quick shout out. In the chat is Bigfoot World Cryptids and the Paranormal Central Florida. They were the absolutely. group of three or four that went out with us and also Tim T's out there. And their narrative is starting to come out and it's on their channel and they do a lot of post work um, looking at video slowdowns. Tim has a, a incredible thermal. Um, he's got some really good thermal. I, I tell you, his thermal is so sharp. I don't, Mike, I don't know what he's using different than yours. I'm not saying yours isn't sharp, but Tim's thermal is really good. And I don't know if you've popped over there and looked at it, or I just haven't seen all of your thermal yet or, or Alex's, but, I haven't gone through all the footage yet, but Tim has some really, really good thermal. They do the slowdowns and then they, they, they get these captures. So they're starting to see things um, and their narrative is coming out. So again, it, it, what I like is 
different groups, different narratives. And then you got to ask yourself, does anything surprise you? Right. And that's kind of the piece I'm going to address in my film of what I think happened in this whole thing. And that's going to be my wrap up, which is different than your all's wrap up. Yeah. Um, I'm currently working on my video and it's just a, it's, you know, the trip out there and it's kind of all the players and the incidents and boots on the ground type stuff. I'm really excited to see what Eric is cooking up because I know he was more interested in the people and the stories, you know, what motivates the Bigfooters. And you had people there that were, you know, the most ardent flesh and blood and then people that were probably way on the other side. So it was very interesting to, I think, see the differences between that. And I tell you, yeah. And I tell you, Eric's first uh, documentary on this place, the Skunk Ape, uh, the one he put out, what was it last year, Eric? Yeah. It, it's definitely a must watch because it, it's it's yeah. it's real. There's no BS and just a great great document on the area. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I, I, I got to say, the, yeah. Matt put a, a a wonderful group of folks together. Um, you know between sharing all the food and hanging out and just, Hey, we got something. Let's debunk it right there in the field. Um, we didn't jump on. It was, you know, X, Y, and Z. It wasn't Bigfoot right off the bat. Um, my thermal stuff. I didn't catch anything that was out of the ordinary. You know, I got my birds, you know, I got us walking down the trail, but uh, not seeing anything that, that jumped you know, that said, Hey, we need to turn around and really take, I didn't even get any really good hog footage. Like I generally get, you yeah. know, Matt and I have been out quite a few years now. Um, most of the time I use those thermals for in close to see if we had anything moving up around mm -hmm. us. Um, and it's, uh, that, and credit to you, Mike. Like, yeah. Go ahead. Sir. Well, no, Mike, I mean, he did this incredible presentation, uh, the second, the first morning after our first night there, just talking about data collection. I mean, Mike is somebody that I've always looked to for this kind of stuff. He obviously has that sort of analytical police background, but I think with data collection, he gave a fantastic presentation. It was almost like a conference kind of feeling, right? And this was, yeah, yeah the kits and all the stuff and the panatones, the colors. I mean, you know, you, you we all know Mike, he does a good job. And I think it was great for other people who get out in the woods who maybe don't take as much of a citizen citizen scientist approach to see some of the stuff. And then maybe if they do have something happen, they can say, Hey, I remember what that guy told me and I should do this. And then they might be able to send that off to somebody. So, but, but I, I think will, it was a great learning experience. I will never forgive him for baking cookies at the campsite. <laughs> <laughs> That's rough in it. Yeah. Fresh baked cookies. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. I didn't this time. I slept in the back of the car because you know, Half of us on this screen may snore, so it's probably better that we're car camping. I think last week in Pennsylvania, we were pretty quiet together. <laughs> we didn't snore each other out and kept Chewy up. And we only uh, we only had a couple incidents with people sleeping on their keys. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, wow. I did it last weekend. I did it last weekend. Went to get my that? car and had the doors locked. And well, that's three of us now. In my defense, I have a brand new Bronco Sport. I don't know how it works. It took me over three hours <laughs> to figure out, Steve, when the tail hatch is up, how to turn off the interior light all the way off in the back. <laughs> It's in that little rocker switch in the roof in the dead center, but it goes like it looks like you pushed it up too far in the ceiling and broke it. And yep. that's the way to kill the lights. So I have a screen system, uh, a netting that when the hood, the back hatches up, it drops a net and I got an inflatable. The best sleep I've ever had camping was in the Bronco Sport. Yep. Yeah, that, that, uh, the back of those are awesome. Yeah. Oh, and you're not oh. going to miss that color blue. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, what, what, what color blue do you have, Matt? I got the powder blue with, <laughs> with the white wheel. Very retro. It's not the Barbie kit pink, but it might be Ken blue. <laughs> uh, this is what we had. We had we had a lot of friends out there yeah, really analyzing what we were coming across. You know. Oh really looking at things and the florida guys that were with us that, that took us around we we got to appreciate them because they're like hey don't yeah um 
you know, yeah, I had to hook, get somebody into their car while we were there. But the Fresca Bronco. <laughs> 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 but we really did analyze stuff that we we're going through and those guys really hey don't go off trail if you're gonna do this kind of gave us a little rundown of stuff there especially for the for us northern boys that were south of oh, the next line you know so important you know i wish i would have heard that wow. <laughs> you know i had onyx out and it's showing all the trails but then the trail disappeared. And that's all I can say. And uh, we had to, we had to go cross country to get out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that happens down in the south. Yeah, Trackway has some interesting video too. I, I've never seen so many birds, and and Tim caught some too. Um, the number of owls in flight uh, that were captured that night is crazy how low they were too. I think Alex, you may have caught one. I remember seeing someone. Yeah. I think I got one on the thermal. Yeah. When I was in the tree or maybe I'm thinking of your Kentucky video. I just watched. I've been watching, catching up on y'all. I don't know. I've, I've, I've gotten them pretty, I, even in Pennsylvania, I think I saw one like last week, owl swoop or something like that. Yeah. yeah the thermals when it's, when you see it on thermal, it's pretty impressive. You see it just yeah. swoop nah, right in. No, nah, Mike, Mike gets the, the owl standing on a log looking around like, who the hell are these jerks? <laughs> uh, Pat, Pat I, I do have taste testers, but we're going to have to find a different one without uh, <laughs> Well, that, that's reserved for the new people. Right, Mike? Anybody new comes to New York, they become the automatic DNA taste testers. <laughs> Nope. Oh boy! I think, I, I think the creature's mildly diabetic. <laughs> oh, Miss Trackway's here. Oh. Well, anyway, um, we got a few minutes left of the show. Uh, just let's go around the table real quick, and uh, you know, Matt, what do you got planned going on for the next few months besides getting out of Dodge? Um, it's pretty much all getting out of Dodge. Brian and I are going out in the morning and we're going to, um, move the trail cam from that location. Cause it's been there six weeks and there's not been one animal caught on it, which is really strange. And where we put it was, I think Max is stand corrected. It's where you and Brian heard it break through. You put it from it, the it, tree. It was standing behind to break it's through. looking at that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's been out there six weeks. Um, it's, it's paid no dividends, but, but it's working great. It's, it's a reveal cam 1080p um, works, work, working really well. So Brian and I are going to go out at 8 AM in the morning and uh, retrieve it, re reload the batteries and, and move it cro closer to the Creek and the river pretty much maybe where Mike was um, and where we saw the black cat um, because those, those two icons is, pretty much overlapping um what's going on there so awesome. it's it's pretty much moving getting getting ready to go to kentucky and uh anybody let me know if central kentucky bigfoot is available so i can keep my central florida kentucky moniker um central florida and uh, move it to central kentucky i don't know if that's taken yet or not but i don't think it is no, i don't think so. I, I just uh copy wrote it <laughs> okay i gave you 20 bucks yeah yeah talk about a dick move <laughs> but i i just wanted to i mean talk about good group of friends um to come down here and vet an area like this for me and, and just put another pair of eyes on it because at some point you know you, you gotta you gotta question yourself hard and you gotta start hearing what everyone's saying Matt, you're 20 minutes from a Publix. Your tent was 20 minutes from a Publix. There can't be anything there. But if you go a mile um, toward the river, you're in land of the lost. It, and, and other than trail runners, there's nothing back there. There's poachers, bigfooters, and big hogs and deer that will kill you. Um, so if ever there was a safe zone, that, that's been my philosophy. And to, and to just bring people down to say, hey, tell me if I'm crazy. You know, is this is this a viable? Or am I totally wasting my time? I'm moving anyway, but I don't know how to put an end to this journey of mine any faster than what I did. And what I did was I leapt a year, two years in advance by having this type <laughs> of activity go on. <laughs> nice fighting. 
So. Yeah. So anyway, I, I thank all of you all and, and, and the, the people in chat. I mean, I think Brian, Brian Darcy's listening to, and uh, everyone who went, is you, yeah. you guys helping out has meant a lot. And I think it's going to pay off. I think it's going to pay off. I, you know, it, it sounds, I wish I could have been there, Matt, but I couldn't get time off from my new job. Of course, now I've been off for the last six weeks. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, Eric, you're up next. Final thoughts. Um, what do yeah, you got going I've got, on? <laughs> I've got a, uh, well, I, I actually, I, I have to edit together the footage from the outing map put together. I also have to get to the footage that I interviewed you for a documentary about Adirondack Bigfoot sightings. Um, that one I want to take a little bit more time with, but I, I just put a video out yesterday of a, uh, I interviewed Bruce Hallenbeck and, you know, he had his sightings back in the eighties in Kinderhook. Um, and then uh, I've got, you know, a bunch of other things as well that, you know, I don't just do Bigfoot stuff. And now it's like, I'm trying to actually space things out. So I don't have too many Bigfoot things come out right in a row and everyone think that's all I do all of a sudden, you know? <laughs> true, true. All right, Alex, you're up next. Speak about the guy who goes all over the place to look at creepy things. Yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously, like I said, I'm doing a video on this outing. I don't know if that's going to be the next one coming out. I'm kind of working on multiple at a time, but it'll be out within the next month or so, I'd say. And then I'm doing mostly stuff now, actually. I'm doing a little bit more. You know, I've done a lot of Bigfoot documentaries in the past. Now I'm moving more into other stuff with my Strange Places series and other weird topics and not necessarily paranormal, even related, just other things that I find creepy and fascinating, uh, a little bit of Bigfoot. So yeah, just a kind of big mix of everything. That's mostly on small town monsters. So yeah. Excellent. Michael. I'm still trying to dump half of the, uh, the footage that I have, um, kill all the space on my computer. So trying to get that <laughs> stuff out to these guys. Um, got a couple of speaking engagements coming up. I'll be at monster fest with Alex. I'll be in Rochester with you, Steve, in a couple of weeks. At the end of the month, I'll be back down in Florida with a couple of friends, uh, checking that out again. And then you and I are back again in, in Rochester. So, And then we'll be back in Whitehall. So it's pretty much been getting around. I uh, got out with, with Alex and Brian last week down in Pennsylvania. So really cool area down there. So are you, just from quick, trying to quick get question. out. Are you going to make the uh, Pennsylvania Bigfoot camping adventure this year? It's on my list of things to do. So, yeah. So, yeah, we're, I'm going to be all over the Northeast and getting back to Florida as well uh, for the, the Florida Bigfoot Conference. And young Daniel, who you met with this morning, great interview, too, by the yes. way. Uh, trying to get out <clears> in the woods <throat> down there with him when I'm down in Florida. So, very nice. Brian and Chewy go hiking, or is your thing says Chewy and Brian go hiking? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, me, I've been uh, riding out his coattails going on these adventures with him. So uh, I've been doing that with him the last couple of weeks. Uh, we got another adventure coming up in the Northeast uh, that we're going to be. Uh, it should be a good time. And then uh, what do we got? Maine coming up. Uh, the crypto Cryptozoology Conference, Lauren Coleman's in, end of the month. In April. At the end of the month, yep. And I think I, I popped back on with you, Steve, at the end of the month to talk about yep. some of my stuff. All right. And uh yeah, we're just we're gonna do as much hiking and as much adventuring as possible this this uh this year. So cool. should be uh, should be a fun a fun year. Mr. Max Powers, how you doing? Oh, we're gonna get, we're we're gonna get you on too, by the way. Well, careful. I talk a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I, uh, I'm gonna go test my new tent. I just bought a Gazelle P4 Plus, and I'm going up to uh, like the Kankamagas. Maybe there's a little road off the Kankamagas that I kind of like. I might go check mm. that out, see what's going on up there. And then I'm just, I'm looking. My schedule's free, and I do nothing but hunt Bigfoot. So if anyone out there wants to email me, I'm free. Excellent. <laughs> I'm free. Yeah, I don't care where it is. Well, you're well. You're welcome up my way anytime, brother. Just let me know if oh. you want to come up and do something in the Dax. We'll go up. Nope. And I'll, right. definitely be right there, no, no. Also. I'll definitely be reaching out to you, Max and Brian and Alex. Where none of us are that far from each other that we can't coordinate something. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And uh, Chuck, uh, no, Mike is still living here in New York. He just happens to go to Florida a lot. Um, 
you know, it seems like the older he gets, the more drawn he is to Flora. Like, he's going to start staying <laughs> down there longer and longer. No, I'm checking on relatives while I go down. So it just gives me an excuse to meet <laughs> friends down there while I'm down there checking on my aunt. So, yeah, one of these days when Mike gets to Florida, he's going to say, I just, I just can't leave. I'm gonna stay. Yeah, when, when he comes back with a set of golf clubs, then we got to start worrying. <laughs> Never a set of golf clubs. <laughs> no and finally, Bill Trackway, how are you? Hey, I'm uh, just going to be doing. <clears throat> say again. I was going to say, what you up to? What you, what you doing? Uh, just doing local stuff around here. There's a place there in Western New York. I really want to get back to you sometime, Mike. Uh, you we know where I'm talking about. Soon. Yes. Yeah. I think Steve's coming for and, that one. Uh, yeah. Are you the, guys going, are you guys going in Virginia. June? Are you guys going to Joe's thing in June? Yeah. May. Ju that's May. June. Is it May? No, June. Second June. week of June? June 15th. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it is June fifteenth. Yes, it's on my calendar. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the I'm really much the only one that knows where we're going. So yeah, I better be there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chris, do your thing, brother. Well, again, I want to thank. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna just go by the numbers here. We got, <laughs> thanks, uh, Matt, and thanks, Eric, uh, Alex, Mike, and Brian, and Chewy. Where's Chewy? <laughs> Thanks, Chewy. Oh. See you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chewy. And, uh, they're talking Max, about it you. It was good to see you. And uh, I can't wait you. to have you back on. And Bill, finding the trackway. Thanks for coming on, guys. I, I just love this show. This is great. Matt, you put together a group of guys that keep that can keep each other grounded. I mean, I, I just I just love the, the whole thought of it. I think it's beautiful. But anyway. <laughs> I want to get back, uh, tell everybody over in the chat. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for uh, joining us. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed the show. If you've not, if you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, boom. Hit the like button. We need that. Punch that like button before you leave. We appreciate it. If you're listening on the podcast, come on over to the YouTube channel. Check it out. Watch the TV. See some of these guys and get to see stuff that you can't hear on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> all right folks on behalf of everybody here at squatch dtv thanks to all our guests tonight i don't have to repeat the names because chris already did it and uh again we we love our audience you guys are the brightest and best out there and uh wow. to all our, our our new folks uh make sure you hit that notification bell so you get informed as to when we release content so as as far as me and everybody else that's current, have a great week. We'll catch you all Friday night, 19, 9 p.m. Eastern for the Bigfoot News. Until then, keep keep safe, stay healthy, and most of God bless. And, of course, keep on squatching. We'll catch you all next week, folks. We thank you for being here with us on Squatch DTV. If you haven't taken the time yet, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And, oh, yes, hit that notification bell, too. We don't want you to miss anything. If you really like our content, you should consider becoming a member. And it's really inexpensive and a great way to support not only the show, but Honest Bigfoot research. Everyone have a great week. Be safe and God bless. We will see you all here next time on Squatch DTV. Keep on squatching.